let's just say silver will hit, you know, 34 at some point this year. I mean, it's going to start to get really popular, Mm -hmm. but you know, from all the research that, you know, you've done and, you know, the technical work that I've done, we know that, you know, it could go to, if it breaks 34, it could go to 50. And when it gets back up, you know, it could go to a hundred. The price of silver and gold are on a real tear gold heading into new all time high territory. What about silver? Could it soon follow? Today, we have a special guest, Jordan Roy Byrne from the Daily Gold Podcast. He's one of the smartest minds in the room, and he's agreed to join us today to give his perspective on what's going on in the precious metals markets. Jordan, welcome to Ron's Basement. Hey, Ron. Thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be on with you today. Yeah, and what a great day, Jordan, that we have, right? I think we were talking before we went live, silver uh, up almost 75 cents to, oh, almost $27. Gold on the spot market pushing up near 3,000, I'm sorry, 2,300, wishful thinking there. Uh, But what's your general feeling about what's happening right now in the silver and gold markets? Well, I think it just today and yesterday, I, I think we're starting to see, I mean, I haven't looked at uh, gold silver ratio charts in the last couple of days, but I think we're starting to see silver take a little bit of the leadership away from gold. And I did, I think I posted an article or a video. I mean, I can't remember uh, in the last couple of weeks and I was looking at, okay, after gold breaks out, then at what point does silver tend to take the baton and actually lead gold. And so historically, I think there's been six or seven gold breakouts, you know, no matter how you measure them. And, you know, it it can be like a couple months after gold breakouts. In some cases it took, you know, seven, eight months for silver to then really start out performing gold. The gold stocks actually, they tend to start out performing gold right away after that breakout, but silver, you tend to need a little more time. And it's really interesting. I mean, gold has a big breakout and then silver has a big breakout. So silver had its own breakout after gold breakouts. And so I was talking about this a couple of weeks ago and it said, okay, well, we're lining up, you know, silver 26. That's, that's the key breakout level. You know, it can also be 28. I mean, it's because there's, there's resistance at 26. Um, and then there's some resistance at 28, 29. So I mean, depending on how you look at it, you could say, well, it's breaking out today or it has to break above 28 or 29. But all that aside, what people need to know is that it looks like we're, you know, if it hasn't already started in the last day or two, we're looking at a uh, a point when silver could start to outperform gold. And that's that's really exciting for the sector. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when we talk about the the gold to silver ratio, um, which got as high as 90 recently. I mean, and, and, and looking at historic charts, that's really high. Uh, do you subscribe to this line of thinking that I, I heard someone describe the, the silver or gold to silver ratio, almost like a, like a rubber band or a, or a bungee cord, right? It gets stretched and stretched and, you know, you can look at it over all types of, you know, historical data from anywhere from a year to a thousand years. But I think, under most any time frame, the the silver or gold to silver ratio had been stretched quite a bit. That that stores up a lot of energy, and then we hear about and and I think maybe I heard you maybe describing this as you were speaking, like a slingshot move at some point, and like you said, maybe two to three months uh, after gold moves. Yeah, um, and, and what you're describing, you see that in many markets, and also the, you, you tend to see that quite a bit more often in commodity markets than stock markets where various commodities will spend a lot of time trading in a a range. I mean, we just saw it with gold in the last um, uh, three and a half years, uh, which, you know, it built this handle on this. It was the handle on this gigantic cup and handle pattern. But yes, you can look at at silver and silver, even it, it can be range bound even more so um, than gold and other markets. So, so the the slingshot, that type of move, what, what you're talking about, you you tend you tend to really see that in silver, even more so than the other commodities. And so, with the gold silver ratio, you're absolutely right because it can, I mean, it can it can trade at a high level for for a long period of time, and then suddenly, in a short period of time, you can get that slingshot move where silver is really 
really outperforming. And, and even just talking about silver in nominal terms, we see the same thing. And so we could, you know, looking at the chart, yes, there's there's some resistance at 28, but there's really 26 is really the most significant resistance. That's It's weekly, monthly, and quarterly resistance, all those charts. So it's going to take some time for us to really confirm that silver has mm -hmm. broken 26. I mean, there's still time this month or this week where it could you know it could correct and come back to 2600 do something like that but you know aside from that I, I do think that i mean whether it's you know this week or this month or even next month i do think silver is clearing 26 and so then silver has a measured upside target it's not the best i'd say it's not the highest probability target but it is fairly high probability that 34 would be the next level. And again, so you have resistance of 26 and there's some resistance of 28, 29. Then you have 34, which is the next most significant resistance for silver. And so getting back to what you said, you know, silver could move from 26 to 34. I mean, you know, nobody knows the future, but that could, you know, that, I, that maybe that happens in six months or eight months or four months, five months. I mean, I don't know. It could be something like that. But if you if you think about how quickly or you, you think about it, that's very quick compared to what's happened the last few years in silver, where, I mean, it's been stuck in the low you know, mid 20s, really, for most of that move. So that that's what I, I think just, in, you know, delving into the big picture, that's what people have to understand. I mean, I know that charts and technicals can be very confusing, but we really could be entering into an era where both gold and silver, they're set up for really explosive moves. Like the, the setup is there. And so that that is going to also include more volatility, both going up and down. And so that mm -hmm. it's really important for people to understand that, that yes, we're at a point in history where over the next, I mean, five, seven, eight years, we could see some really huge moves. But at the same time, you know, you're not going to go straight up over seven to eight years. There will be, yeah. you know, some some downturns within that period. So, so, uh, boy, I have so many things now I want to ask you about. You, you, you spoke about confirmation of silver on the breakout, and and help me because you know a lot more about this than I do, and you'll probably be helping our viewer also. In terms of silver confirming this this move above twenty six, uh, do we have to wait for the end of the week to say that it confirmed on a weekly basis, and wait till the end of the month to say that it? confirmed on a monthly basis is that is that how that works yeah absolutely that's absolutely how it works and so okay. that's the first uh, and so we're we're you know we're, we're, at, we're speaking on april 3rd so there's a long way to go that's for right. a month but um but yes that's the first thing to watch okay. for is just just see how silver closes the week if it can hold, care, hold and, and you know just hold noticeably above 2600 that's the first confirmation that we're looking for Okay. Next question for you, Jordan, and thank you, because I I feel like I and I know our viewers are learning here as well. Um, one thing that I've observed and, and become a, a rather uh, vocal, uh, uh, voc you know, vocally and visually showed to my viewers is, like you said, the silver price over the last number of years, and then especially, let's say, in the last year and three months, that the price range that it was trading within really seemed to be compressed and there was this wedge pattern that was formed um, and that we've broken out of this wedge but maybe on a daily basis I guess at this point we can say we broke out of the wedge um, it, but but we also looked at a big long-term cup and handle formation in silver I think started in maybe was it 1980 uh, at fifty dollars and then 2011 at fifty dollars that formed this big massive cup and then we have this handle uh in silver could we uh with you know if we break out of this wedge pattern could we be at a point where you know eventually silver could get a like a turbo charge and I mean what would it look like if silver broke out of that cup and handle pattern yeah the uh a couple of things on that. First of all, even though it looks like a cup and handle, it, it's and again we're getting really in the weeds. It's technically yeah. not a cup. It's technically not a cup and handle because the handle and silver retraced too much um, okay. of the preceding move. Like if you look at gold, that was it was a very, you know, the handle only retraced I think thirty eight percent of the preceding move, and so typically that's what you see in cup and handles, and that's why gold was able to 
I mean, yes, it took three and a half years, but that's why gold was able, you know, to, to have this explosive breakout where, whereas for silver, silver moved up to 50, but if silver were in a cup and handle it, it, I think it would have had to hold about 35 or something like that. So I know okay. we're getting, I know we're getting real in the weeds yeah. because everyone's looking at it. They're saying this is a cup and handle in silver. So yeah. me, me, me. So and <laughs> yes. But, but here's, here's the distinction. Cause you know, I love to get nuanced. I mean, the distinction is technically it's not a cup and handle. However, at the same time, if, and when silver, you know, it breaks about 35, you can see it start to, when it starts moving back towards 50, it's then it's still setting up for a really, really explosive move. So it's like, it's like, yes, the conclusion is right. Silver is in this spectacular pattern where it can have this incredible move when it breaks 50, but it's technically not a cup and handle. So, you know, I don't, I don't know how we want to take, but, but uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, we're getting in the weeds, but the, the, the big, if you think it's a cup and handle, you're still right on the big picture that yes, sure. when silver is, and again, so looking at, um, if you look at the quarterly charts, or if you're looking at quarterly candles, like 34, this is another reason why 30, you see this in technical analysis a lot. So, you know, looking at that wedge you're talking about, or the inverse head and shoulders on silver, you know, there's a low of 18, you have this 26 resistance. So you take that, that measures up to 34. But when you're also looking at, if you're looking at the quarterly chart and those candles going back to 1980, I mean, you can see there's resistance, you know, 33, 34. So it's lining up with that target. So the the point is if if and when we get a quarterly close above 34, that is going to put us in really good position to rally up to 50, maybe even break that. But you know, getting back to the the cup and handle, this this is a real spectacular base in yeah. silver. And I've said that, you know, the so gold's broken out from a 13-year cup and handle pattern. Silver, again, technically it's not a cup and handle, but when silver starts approaching 50 again, I mean, I have said this is the biggest, the biggest base of all time in financial markets, yeah. in my opinion. So in 10 to 20 years, like th these gold and silver, Pat, they will be in new technical analysis textbooks in the future. <laughs> so silver Again, if this is the biggest base of all time, it could be the biggest breakout of all time. So, and I talked with David Morgan about this, and and I I do I completely agree with him. And, and you've seen this in other commodity markets. Like if you go back and you look at what happened two thousand four, two thousand five, when oil broke out from a huge base, when mm -hmm. copper broke out from a huge, they moved like, you know, like that just really quickly. Or I don't know if I have my video right, but they, yeah. they after those app like commodity market, and you saw this in cocoa, by the way, which is similar. Yeah. This is what happens in commodity markets when they break out of really, really long bases. They can have these moves where they go straight up. So whenever we see silver breaking above fifty, it's probably it's probably going to move towards a hundred or at least ninety five. The measured upside target of that, I think, is ninety five you're going to see silver move from 50 to 95. That's going to happen like really quickly. Like it might be in a year, <laughs> it might be in four or six months. So that that's what we're, that's what we're heading towards, I think in the future. And um, I'm flying you to St. Louis when that happens, because uh, that's the, uh, that's the silver bear behind me who has a blind, a blindfold on that says 85 and uh, we're taking the blindfold off at eighty-five dollars silver, Jordan. And uh, you know, I, I may, yeah. I may, I we'll may see. You to come. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. What's, right. What's yeah. what's that? What's that movie? Meet me in St. Louis. Isn't that pretty famous? <laughs> Meet me in St. Louis for yeah. the big un, un, I, un, no. blindfolding of you know, the bear. I will. I will. Um, you know, and, yeah, and and it's you know, sorry to babble on here, no. but then then you could get into you know, I was talking about this earlier. Then you get the volatility on both sides. So I, I ultimately, I think silver is going even much, much higher than $100 an ounce. But, you know, we could get to 100 the next couple of years, and then you could have a downturn where, you know, it comes back to 65 or 70. And so that's what people need to understand that, yeah. yes, there's explosive <laughs> upside, but you really, like, this is a good time for people to really understand and learn their emotions and know, you know, yeah. they, they, could, they could sense and understand what is coming and then have a plan for that. So... So you don't make the wrong decision when silver goes to a hundred. You're like, oh well, you know, 
holy shit, I'm going to, you know, I need to buy a lot more now. It's going to go to 500 in the next year. So yeah. pe people need to, you know, they need to mind their emotions and kind of plan ahead. That's all yeah. I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting you say that, Jordan, because I, I preach that to, um, to my audience as well, that like you need to have a plan. Like it's fun to sit around and fantasize about, oh, silver is going to go to the moon. Silver. What if silver goes to, you know, but but when it actually happens, uh, because I've owned stocks that have done that before and been in that sit where something sky, it, it can become you, you can become you, you, it's easy to make very emotional decisions and bad decisions if you don't have somewhat of a plan in place to uh, like, what am I going to do? if silver does skyrocket but i was i was i know last time silver went way up david morgan did a good job of calling the top so maybe we can just listen to him what what, what he has right. to say if you're looking to buy gold silver or platinum do yourself a favor and check out pimbex the online precious metals bullion dealer and sponsor of ron's basement i was a happy customer before they offered to support the channel you'll find they have the best prices quality, and service. I think Pembex is best, and you will too. And be sure to tell them that you're from Ron's basement. There, there were a lot of warning signs going into that, but I think, I think, and, you know, shout out to him because I, I remember listening to him on a podcast where he, he did call the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I and I was thinking, okay, maybe Silver will, will only correct for like two or three years at that point. But I mean, it, you know, it, it took, it, it, it took a really long time. And so that's, that's what people need to understand, you know, it, yeah, like, it, like the, you know, this, the secular move, as I'm saying, um, or even just the move to a hundred, you know, the move to a hundred, that could be a top for two, two or three years. Yeah. So that's what, yeah. that's what people need to understand. I, I want to ask you about this idea of overhead resistance and ask you to explain it a little more to me. And also the, the person who's joining us here for this, uh, for this conversation, because when we talk about um, silver, let's say, rising once it gets to $34 per ounce, and then at that point, sure, you know, silver has, has you know, had a couple of times, very short periods of time where it, uh, in 1980 and 2011, where it got up to 50, but there just aren't a lot of people out there, I don't think, who are holding silver that bought it at, let's say, 43, when the spot price was $43 an ounce, who are patiently waiting for it to get to 43 to sell it. How does that idea play into uh that move for silver once it does get above those resistance levels yeah well it's a great question and resistance is very important i think people have to think about that as it's just supply and demand like when you're looking at support and resistance mm -hmm. it's just you're looking at it, it's supply and demand so it's it's based on um you know buyers and sellers you know mostly in the futures market you know they're buying and selling various contracts and to get into the second part of your question, you know, when you break above resistance, that level then becomes support. So silver has broken above 26. And at some point, it could go back to 26 just to retest. Now, it doesn't always happen in uh, commodity markets or in, in any market, but that would be totally not. I mean, silver could it could move up to 28, 29 and people might. OK, well, it's going to go to 34 now. Then it could come back and retest 26. So, you know, I hope I'm answering the question, but yeah. these, re, you know, re, these support resistance levels are levels in the past where there were more sellers than buyers. Like that's ah. the way to think about it. So yeah. in 26, there have been more sellers than buyers over the last couple of years. And that's why it's, been, it's taken so long. And, and, you know, so, so the buyers have been able to move it up to 26 so many times, but then the sellers kept knocking it back down. But now that the buyers have gained control, that 26 level is going to be support. So if silver comes back down to retest 26, the buyers are going to have the advantage. More buyers now are going to come in. And also all those sellers who are selling it at 26, they now know there's also like a, a psychological change yeah. in the market. Like everybody knows, okay, 26 is broken. So we net, we now know that that is support. And, and so yes, 34. So that's the next level. And so it, it's, this is just simple stuff stuff and so yeah. it helps us know that you know yes there's some resistance at 28 or 29 so that's a level where you know silver hits that maybe it'll do a little pullback from there 
but we know at the same time, okay, 34, like that's the next 26, like that's going to be yeah. the next significant level. So that's how to think about uh, support and resistance. It's just supply and demand. Yeah. And then I imagine once it breaks through the resistance, then you've got a number of people that are thinking, you know, I, let's say silver goes to 34 um, and it does start to pull back a little bit. You've got a number of people who are thinking, uh, boy, I missed the, you know, I, I wish I, I, people who'd wish they'd bought it, let's say 29 or 28, that then if as it pulls back, they'll they'll jump in as buyers. It seems exactly. like it's a it's a supply and demand dynamic. And then with a, a little bit of psychology mixed in there as well. Is that, no, is that, yeah, is, no, that, that's, a, that's incredibly important insight because that's what happens when the market, yeah. you know, the market breaks above that level. But for the people that missed it, they're the ones who are buying when it pulls back. So yeah. again, like if silver moves up to 28, 29 and, you know, the, the people who missed that, you know, some of those will be waiting for silver to come back to 26. And again, you know, I, we, we can't predict the future. It might, come back to 26 but you know maybe silver goes to 29 and then it only it only comes back to 27 yeah you know and then when and then when that happens and people you know like what that's actually really bullish when a market like it's correcting and you and people tend to think oh it's going to come back to you know x but then it mm -hmm. doesn't you know it doesn't it gets within five or seven percent and then it starts moving and then people you know, when, when it, they, they have to say okay now i have to buy it it missed i missed it <laughs> once or twice yeah. It missed my target. Now I have to buy it, and so that's why, like, sm you know, smaller than expected corrections yeah. can be really, really, really bullish because it tells everyone, okay, you know, this market moved up a lot, but it really only corrected, like, it, it only corrected a small amount. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm getting, I'm getting like super excited about silver. I'm going to touch on gold at the end of our conversation, but also, what about the fact, Jordan, that the silver market is also so small? I mean, when you look at uh, the the overall value by by several different measurements, right? Like, well, there's about a billion ounces of silver combined between mining and recycling produced per year. That makes it uh, what I guess at today's price about a twenty seven billion dollar market. Um, it, it, d does that play in in terms of the like if if how do I say this? If it's not like we're dealing with Apple stock or the S and P five hundred, which is thousands of multiples bigger, the silver market's small. Could that some could that be a factor in terms of price movements as we as we move forward? Absolutely, yeah. It, it will accentuate certain movements. Like if you think about what happened in nineteen seventy nine, nineteen eighty, and even mm -hmm. twenty eleven. I mean, even from I think twenty ten to twenty eleven. I mean, silver at then. I mean. I think 20, 21, 22, like that area was, you know, silver had crashed during the great financial crisis, but it came back. And then, you know, I remember that level, you know, like if silver can break above that level, you know, it, it has room to really move. And that's what happened. It made that huge move in 2011. And so going back to silver, having this huge base at $50, that's why, technically when it's able to break above 50 you could see that move to you know 95 or 100 like really really mm -hmm. fast and so someone yeah. you know someone could look at the chart and they'll say well it you know it took so long for it to it was trading between 20 and 26 for you know several years and then you know maybe it took a year or so at you know around 34 but then when it finally got to 50 and broke above that um you know there's just there's less sellers along the way and the buyers are getting stronger and stronger then you get up to 50 and then, you know, once you break, it's like all hell could break loose at that point because of <laughs> yeah. not only the technicals of the market, but then, as you said, you factor in, this is a tiny market. Yeah. So, and so people can, they can under, they can look at the chart and say, okay, well, you know, I understand if it breaks 50, it could have this huge move, but then you add in what you're saying that, you know, the bulls are gaining they're getting stronger and stronger, gaining more control as we approach 50. But then mm -hmm. you break 50 and you have this really tiny market where, you know, all this just huge amount of new money is coming in. That's how you can get like super vertical moves like that. That's how you get these moves in commodities. So I, I don't know if I answered your question, but I, that, that's no. how I see it. That's how I see it tying in with silver breaking 50 uh, that you could get, you know, this, 
this tidal wave of money coming in. And that's how it's able to move from 50 to 100 in a, a much shorter amount of time than one would assume. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and on top of that, if, um, you know, I, my, my neighborhood here where I live, we have a uh, neighborhood swimming pool and it's great. It's wonderful. Great place, like a community watering hole. I have great neighbors. Um, I can tell you from uh, having gone to that pool for years, none of my neighbors have any interest in talking about silver or gold. So uh, as, as you talk about those, like the scenario unfolding, if the mainstream media starts to pick up on, I mean, they never talk about silver, but if the mainstream media starts to talk about silver, if people, you know, maybe begin to wake up and realize that, um, that no matter how you want to slice it or dice it, the real value of the U.S. dollar is going down. And that if we get just a few, maybe we're one in 100, one in 200 people right now that are what I would say real enthusiasts about precious metals. If that number goes from, you know, one in 200 to even 10 in 200, you're talking about multiples more money coming into a really small market. Is that, I mean, do you, do you, do you ever think about that as a, as a plausible scenario? Fortuna Silver Mines is a global intermediate gold and silver producer. Since 2005, Fortuna's best-in-class management has delivered impressive growth and profits. Fortuna's solid financial position and operational expertise allows for performance in any precious metals price cycle and provides a foundation from which to harvest great profits in more favorable metals markets. Investing in Fortuna is an investment in quality, long-term, sustainable production of in-demand precious and base metals. It's very plausible. And it, because any market that performs really well, I mean, over yeah. time, it is essentially, that that's what attracts attention. Like, why is crypto yeah. <clears throat> and Bitcoin so <laughs> popular? I mean, I don't, I want to, I don't want to, you know, cr crap on crypto, but it's gone up since 2011. I mean, it's traded It's traded with tech stocks, basically. So, it, you know, tech stocks and the stock market, they've been in the secular bull since 2009. I think Bitcoin started trading in 2011. And that's why it's so popular. It's been going up for more than 10 years. I mean, gold just yeah. broke out <laughs> from a 13-year cup and handle pattern. I mean, it's not that gold is only marginally above where it was 13 years ago. Silver still, I mean, it's way below its 1980 high. So, um, yeah, but- that's why gold and silver are not as popular. I mean, they yes, they were more popular in 2010, 2011. Everyone's was talking about it. So the better a market does, naturally, you know, the more bullish sentiment will be and the more popular it will get. And that is not necessarily an automatic sell signal because people will assume, you know, yeah. oh, well, everybody loves it. We And, you know, that's a sell signal. Uh, generally speaking, yes, it is. But, you know, gold and silver could get really popular in the next year or two, but- you know that could, you know silver could get really really popular when it breaks 50 but that doesn't mean it's immediately going to go back down it, it, it know, could it, last it could, a couple, it could last a couple of years maybe five yeah. who knows right but yeah yeah, yeah. so I, that that's another important point i mean but my 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 thinking is and my point is like let's just you know presume in the next two or three you know silver goes to 100 and then we have a you know we'll have a sell off for a year or two silver you know from that move 50 to 100 like yes the the sentiment and the popularity will really start to increase but that again that is not necessarily like an automatic sell signal it's an important mm -hmm. thing to know and understand crowd psychology but it doesn't mean like on that day or that month the market is going to peak but you know just circling back to the present what's popular but crypto is way way more popular than precious metals now and so that that tells you you know, and we and we have silver breaking above twenty six. Gold has already broken out. That just tells you, using some common sense, this thing, for the next couple of years, this thing could really run. Yeah, yeah, very, very interesting. I want to get. I, I heard you speak about this, uh, so, so I want, but I want you to share this with uh, with my audience um, or with our our audience today. I should say, not my audience. Um, in regards to silver if we look back at uh let's say 1980 when there was a real uh, high level of interest in silver and i've heard these old time 
coin shop guys say, oh, there were lines out the door around the block. We couldn't even let everybody come in, right? We had to turn people away uh, when silver became very popular. Uh, we know in 2011, obviously, silver became very popular again. We also know, interestingly, that just one year ago, when we had this uh, little banking issue in the United States, silver became very, very popular again. My local coin shop didn't have any silver, uh, and it's a big shop. And I know the online bullion dealers were raising minimum uh, order sizes and and taking six, seven, eight weeks to to deliver products. Do you think that now... Uh, because of technology, because information can spread much more quickly. And on top of that, uh, you don't have to go and get in your station wagon and drive to the local coin store to buy silver. You can, but you can buy it online. That 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 uh, changes in the market can happen much more quickly now, as opposed to what we've experienced in the past. Yeah, it's very possible. I mean, I, I don't, I don't have the best set. I mean, it's a really good question, but I'll I'll defer to somebody else who I think can answer that better. But my, you know, my general opinion, and this is not with it, it's just an opinion, is mm -hmm. that I I mean, I tend to agree with you. I think I think that could lead to more explosive moves. I don't know if it condenses the time frame of the bull market, but I think it uh. I think it could it could really add to um the volatility and just the 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 volatility on both the upside and downside and the explosiveness um, of the moves that we're going to see. And just the, really the, you know, ridiculousness of what could be coming. And again, we've already mm -hmm. seen this in, in, in crypto a little bit with, you know, these yeah. worthless coins, these doge coins, you know, all that stuff. And just these scams and, you know, money is going into, I mean, that's what we saw in the you know the late seventies in, in gold and silver and gold and silver stocks. But I, given social media, you know, technology, as you said, that I yeah, I definitely think that um, that that could have a real impact, and that it could. That's my guess is that it'll increase the volatility on both sides. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, and I, and I want to go back to what you said earlier because uh, it was you made a great point and. Something that I'd never thought of, and I imagine a lot of our viewers had never thought of either, <laughs> that just because silver, if and when, does have this great big move and everybody's talking about it, um, that doesn't mean that that's the immediate time to sell. Um, Ross Beatty, who's uh, uh, kind of a well-respected guy in the silver and gold mining, well, the precious metal mining the, uh, the sector, I heard him once say that like the time to sell is when all the ducks are quacking. And I often repeated that um, and said, yeah, you know, like Ross Beatty says, sell when all the ducks are quacking. But that's not necessarily true. Um, you know, maybe uh, another way to say that is, uh, um, and I'm not contesting Ross, I have a great deal of respect for him, but, um, you know, maybe think about selling some when when you think that the you know the ducks are all quacking but you're starting to sense that they're reaching their their peak of quacking or that or that the quacking is going to start to uh, subside i mean nobody can time these things perfectly right. but um but i think it's it's interesting and and again what you said i think was a very helpful piece of information for our viewers and uh and that is that you know you do want to have a plan um, you know, of what you're going to do uh, if you are going to convert, you know, some precious metals into some other hopefully real asset um, uh, if and when things do really take off. Yeah, it's so important. Um, and the first thing <clears throat> I would say is the first thing I would say is always look at the chart first. And I mean, if, yeah. if, if, if we're seeing this kind of a move in silver where it's going straight up and you're not, you're <laughs> right. not looking at a daily chart, but when you're looking at like a, a weekly or a monthly chart and it's gone straight up like that for, you know, a year or two or six months or whatever. I mean, that, that should, you should just use common sense and understand, you know, that, that move is not going to last, you know, that will, that will correct and come back at some point. Doesn't mean it's going to come back all the way, but you know, you have to, understand what's going on on the chart and again you can just use common sense and then yeah i'll try and align that with how people are thinking about it psychologically and yeah. so because what you're saying i mean like let's just say silver will hit you know 34 at some point this year i mean it's going to start to get really popular mm -hmm. but 
you know, from all the research that, you know, you've done and, you know, the technical work that I've done, we know that, you know, it could go to, if it breaks 34, it could go to 50. And yeah. when it gets back up, you know, it could go to a hundred. So people, that that's a much different situation. Silver being really popular at the end of this year and say it's at 34. That's much different than, you know, let's just say like eight, you know, 24 months from now, silver is really popular and it just hit 100. And, you know, the chart, the last two years, yeah. the chart looks like this. Then you have to understand, you know, I still <laughs> think it's going to, I still think it's going to go a lot higher in the next five, seven, 10 years. But, you know, I got to take some off the table. I got to sell one third or one half just to be, you know, just to be careful, just to be safe, just to be prudent. Yeah. And that's what the, that's what the best investors do because they, they, can, nobody, you know, nobody can time everything perfectly, even though there's people who will tell you, oh, I called the bottom, I called the top and I, I called this and I called that. Like nobody can do that. There's like five no. people in the world who can do that. And they'll tell you they can't even do it. So no, I, that's why I, it's, it's so important to have, have that plan. And and that's what I, I tell people, you know, dealing with the, the, you know, the risky juniors. I mean, I try and find high quality juniors, but yeah, I mean, if, if, if those are going straight up and you have, you know, a five, a three X or a five X, just sell half or sell one third, yeah. you know, and that way, if it, you know, if it goes down and it becomes a better value, you can buy more. If it keeps going up, you'll sell, you know, you still have some. And so you profit it. If it keeps going up, sell another third. First Mining Gold is a development company advancing two of the largest gold projects in Canada, Spring Pole in Ontario and Du Parquet located in Quebec. Each already has 5 million ounces of gold reserves, but exploration initiatives are underway at both projects to find even more gold. First Mining is well financed, has zero debt, and owns an interest in four additional Canadian gold development projects. You know, uh, Jordan, I, I had a, a great friend who was the head trader. We had a uh, one of the big financial service companies here in St. Louis, uh, AG Edwards, which had been around for years and years, massive financial services company. And he he said exactly what you said. Um, I asked him one time, I'd had a stock that had doubled or tripled. The way he put it was, you can always sell half and hope that you're wrong. Hope that, you know, the half that you hold on to, <clears throat> excuse me, continues to go up in your favor. Yeah, I mean, you could sell a third, sell half. And yeah. and, and again, like we're, like we're saying earlier, think about this in advance like now is the yeah. time to be thinking about those strategies so you know if silver hits 100 and it's you know it's gone straight like th that you know yeah. if you're going to sell third or sell half you know and then you know and then at, at some point you can you know replenish your stock and, yeah. and yeah. buy more but you it's it's just so important you have to think about that plan in advance because when you know and if you don't have a strong believe me I, with stocks i've made every mistake possible you know, yeah, same here, yeah, same here, yeah. Jordan. <laughs> you, see it goes, you, you see it's gone up a lot. You say, oh, well, I think it could go up another five times. You know, I'm going to hold or I'm going to buy more. Right. <laughs> you, you learn You learn through making those mistakes. And so that, yes. I'm sure that's what, you know, you like to tell your audience. I mean, to pass along some of your wisdom. And, this, and, and again, this is so important because, you know, you're going to hear the same message from me and a lot of other people probably. Yes, you know, silver, is, it, it can go up. It's going to go up a lot. But you you want to make money and keep your money when it happens. You don't want to ride it all the way up, you know, and not sell. And then, you know, like right. you have another 2011 where it's like, you know, it's like, does it, you know, it's like dead for a decade or whatever. So yeah. it's just, yeah. it, we, I can't, you know, drone on about it enough, you know, have yeah. a plan. If it goes vertical, sell half, you know, sell a third, just figure it out in advance. Yeah, and if and if and if it was uh, if it continues upward skyrocketing, well, you still have half, right? You didn't sell everything yes. and miss out on the rest of that move. If it goes back down, well, then you can say, "Man, I'm glad I sold half," and maybe you look to re-enter. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I had a long conversation yesterday with Keith Newmeyer, who's been in the silver and gold, you know, uh, sector, a uh, copper sector, also for for decades, and. He was talking about the the kind of 10-year bull run that we had from, I think it was 02 through 2012. And he described it just like you. He was like, you know, the market would go up and we'd think, okay, it's over, it's done, you know, pull back and then it'd start to pull back. And we would think, oh, it's done. It's not, you know, where the bull, the bull market's over. And then it would continue up 
again, you know, and then it would pull back and then it would continue up again. So uh, these things can, you know, again, and, and I and I really respect that you say that, like nobody knows absolutely for sure, but it's good to have a plan in place to, to kind of navigate things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What about gold? Last question. Last question for you. So we've talked a lot about silver. Um, obviously, gold is now breaking out into new all time. I can't believe we're saying that, Jordan, but breaking has broken out essentially um, uh, into some all time high territory. Um, any thoughts on kind of what's going on with gold and um, uh, what 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 we're looking at in terms of, you know, are are there additional resistance levels in gold right now? Um, I mean, you there are. You have a measured upside target at twenty three fifty. So mm -hmm. I, I, I'm looking at Finviz. I don't know what contract it is, but it says twenty three thirteen now. So there is resistance wow. at twenty three fifty. Also twenty five hundred. So th those are strong targets. So mm -hmm. maybe maybe at twenty five hundred we could that could be an, a level where we pull back for a couple months. I mean, I don't know. I'm just considering sure. possibility so i i think this really strong move that we've had i think i think it's going to 2350 um and, and 2500 but this this cup and handle pattern i mean it this 13 year cup and handle pattern which we broke out from um you know a, a month ago or whenever I, it's so beautiful i mean this is like chart porn for guys like me you don't you don't <laughs> yeah. see like i told you this in this the silver base like these will be in technical analysis textbooks in the future because yeah. you, you don't see you know these kinds of spectacular patterns that often i mean there's really only i mean there's less than 10 you know i could mm -hmm. point to in the last 100 years so this i mean and i and i think this pattern has a measured upside target of like roughly um three thousand. but when you look at the when you look at the cup and so this is just using arithmetic that's how you get three thousand. you know the the depth of the cup but when you look at the the percentage so it's 1050 to, you know, 2100, or, you know, some people use 1900, but for looking at the low up to the high, you know, the depth of the, you know, that percentage is close to a hundred percent. So if you take that percentage and measure it, you have a, uh, I call it a log target. So you have a log target of around 4,000. And wow. I looked at his, I looked at historical cup and handles and that ones that lasted at least several years. There's not that many of them, and they're not they're not as pure as this gold pattern. Mm -hmm. But what I what I found in all those patterns was they ended up going like well beyond the log target. That's the first. Thing. The second thing is they went from the the measured upside, which would be three thousand in this case, to the log target, which is four thousand. All those historical patterns, it, it took like six to twelve months to to get to that point. So I think. Um, you know, over the next uh, two or three years, um, you know, if we have a recession, if we have a downturn mm -hmm. in the economy, like we can see gold, I mean, 4,000 would be my minimum target. But I, I think, again, if we have a recession in the next couple of years, I mean, we could see, you know, 5,000, 6,000 gold potentially in the next three years. That doesn't mean I'm doing it. You know, that target right. doesn't mean right. I'm doing anything super reckless right now. But it's just to understand that these types of patterns, you know, you have 3,000, you have 4,000, they're just, they're so bullish that they end up, the market ends up going well beyond well be. those targets. So I think that that's what's important to understand. Um, I, I think that's, you know, where we're headed over the next couple of years. I mean, the, the, the last point is the stock market is what's ho holding gold back. Now, gold has been strong enough, and now silver, they have been strong enough to break out um, even before the, you know, the economy has gone into recession officially and, you know, the stock market has had this downturn. I mean, that, that, the strength has really surprised me, but again, if in the next you know year or two, if we get that downturn in the economy and we get a recession, I mean, that is going to set the stage for explosive. You know, gold, yes. Gold and silver to make really, really explosive. Like that's how gold moves from, not just three to four thousand, but that's how gold can hit five to six, I think, yeah. in the next two to three years. So that's really the missing link right now. Is you still have you still have a secular bull in the stock market that has not broken. And so if you if you go to the seventies, the reason why that was so powerful, of course, there's several reasons. But in the seventies, you had a secular bear in the stock market and in the bond market. Like if you look at the two thousands, 
you only had a secular bear in stocks. Like bonds were still in a secular bull. Mm -hmm. And so this this bull market, uh, th this is shaping up to be, I think, more similar to the 70s than the 2000s. And so the 70s, you have really explosive moves you know, both on the upside and the downside. And so again, once we see the stock market actually break, I know some people think, oh, well, you know, we're going to see a repeat of 2020 or 2008 where, you know, the, the metals will, cr you know, precious metals will crash with the stock market. I mean, th this is a whole nother conversation. I don't yeah. see that happen. I don't see that happening this time, especially in the next couple of years. You know, I may change my tune if something changes, but the stock market cracking, the economy going into recession, Again, that is the fuel that can, mm -hmm. you know, that can again move gold from not only you know three to four thousand, but you know five to six, and maybe from maybe take silver from fifty to a hundred. Like that could be what's needed to really make those moves happen. Wow, wow, uh, Jordan, uh, you are a super smart person. I knew that before I came on because I've watched you extensively in your videos. So on behalf of our viewer. Uh, basement dwellers, they call themselves. And, and on behalf of myself, you've provided us today with a great deal of uh, quality, very high quality insight and information. So I want to say thank you. Uh, also, if people want to learn more about you, um, if you want to brag about yourself for a few moments, uh, the floor is yours. Well, if they want more info, they can go to thedailygold.com. I have a free report they can opt into. I send out a free newsletter about once a week. I have a, a YouTube channel where I publish lots of interviews that I do, um, and I do solo commentaries on it. Um, mm -hmm. And I write a, a premium uh, newsletter where I, I put out a big update every Sunday talking about the stocks that I own, the stocks that I'm looking to buy. And, you know, I'm looking at smaller companies, you know, not the super tiny penny stocks, but you know, mm -hmm. I'm looking at really juniors that are not huge, but they're a good established size. You know, ones that I think can go up 5X or 10X in this bull market. So I, I talk about the things that I'm investing in. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I just go to the dailygold.com. You could get a lot of free info there. Also free info on my YouTube channel. And so you could follow me along there. Um, and, you know, maybe at some point if it, you decide my analysis is for you that you could become a subscriber you know if not then you could just happily continue to enjoy the free content well and you and you've given us a great deal of high quality information for free today so uh in the description of this video i will put at the very top a link to your website thedailygold.com and then i'll also put a link to your youtube channel as well okay and great. yeah yeah and thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to bug you in uh, a month or two to come back on. I know that, uh, that again, that our viewers have enjoyed this immensely and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next time, Jordan. Oh, thank you, Ron. It's, it's been a real pleasure to be on with you. Uh, you ask great questions and yeah, I'm looking forward to coming back to this again with you and your audience. Sounds like a plan. Thanks, Jordan.